Hello, Tubers. This is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from sunny Mesa, Arizona. And today I'm going to do a video on a Hong Kong orchid tree that was planted about five years ago and is just not doing good whatsoever. So the tree is in my neighbor's front yard. Like I said, it's a Hong Kong orchid. Um, it was purchased from Moon Valley Nursery. Um, I think they paid a ton of money for it, probably like five grand. But hey, they installed it for free, you know? It's BS. But anyway, uh, so they purchased this tree. Moon Valley comes in and they dig a hole, plop the thing in, put a stake in it, leave. And well, before they left, they tried selling them some moon juice fertilizer. And uh, I think the neighbors were like, yeah, no, you know, we just spent five grand. That should have been included. So, yeah, we're going to pass. Right. So they left and uh, the tree's been in the ground about five years. I think it's mainly uh, it's maybe grown like a foot or two feet in that time. All right. Um, it's been looking pretty bad, uh, I would say, since they planted it. All right. So in the summer, <coughs> it uh, wasn't getting enough water. All right, it was getting watered wrong. So it would lose its leaves in the summer. It would put out a new flush and, you know, they'd die. You know, leaves would ju just die within a week or two. And they'd just keep doing that all summer long. Uh, spring and fall didn't look too bad just because the watering requirements were lower um, and the temperatures were lower, the sun intensity was lower. So it didn't look too bad. In the winter, um, it lost most of its leaves. Uh, Hong Kong orchids are kind of weird in the winter. Sometimes they'll lose their leaves for like a week or something, and then it warms up a little bit, and they put it on another flush. They just they can't figure it out. So it's kind of the same as uh, the summer, the winter, all right? So Hong Kong orchids, obviously, they're tropical trees. They're not native to here. They're not desert trees. And uh, Moon Valley uh, and a lot of nurseries like that, they really don't care um what you want and they will sell you anything because they are in it to make money all right they do not grow these things they are middlemen so they buy it from a grower they put it for sale somewhere or put it online or whatever people buy it they come out and they charge you a ton of money for it and say they're planting it for free and then they leave all right they're just taking your money and going i don't do that at my nursery right all my plants guys these are like my babies you know all these plants, I, I don't buy plants from other people and resell them. Everything I sell, I either grew from seed, grew from cuttings, grew from air layers or something like that, all right? And most of these plants, you know, if you've watched my other videos, you'd see I don't automatically water my plants. You know, they're all hand watered. It's not automated or anything like that. All my plants are, or most of my plants, I should say, are in grow bags, all right? Just because of the benefits, I use really good soil. I mulch the top of them fertilize them. I move them around if they need shade, sun, winter protection, whatever it may be, because I want my plants to be healthy when people buy them. A lot of these nurseries, they don't care. You know, they'll get these plants from, they'll order them from like mainly California or Florida. They get them in, they were probably grown in a uh, greenhouse. They sat on a truck for a couple days and they put it on a trailer and they drive it to your house and plop it in your yard. All right. These things are destined to die. Um, I don't know if you guys ever noticed, you drive around after a monsoon storm and uh, you see these trees, you know, we have a storm, the, the ground gets really saturated, muddy, we get these heavy winds and it blows the tree over and it looks like literally someone took this tree, laid it on its side and pulled the container off the bottom. It doesn't look like it was planted in the ground, it's still got the shape of the container. All right, and that's even after like 10 years. So, you know, they're growing these trees and they're selling them to people. And they're mature trees that were grown in a container. Well, they're never, the root system's never going to be a normal root system. If you've watched my video on grow bags and how to make them, I talk about this and the benefits of grow bags. Um, I'm not totally against containers. I do use them sometimes, but majority of my plants are in grow bags. And that's for a reason, because it gives a healthier root system. Um, so back to their uh, Hong Kong orchid. Uh, the reason I did not make a video this Sunday, or this past Sunday, I should say, is I was planning on doing it yesterday, and my daughter was going for her yellow belt test in Kung Fu, okay? Big deal. We, you know, we thought it was going to be an hour, hour and a half. We go there, and it turns out to be well over three hours, so 
By the time I got home, there was not enough light. I couldn't film. All right. That's one of the reasons I did not get the video posted. So long story short, my neighbor's tree, I've been telling him for uh, probably a couple of years now, hey, the tree's not looking too good. If you guys need any help with it, let me know. They know I grow all these trees, you know, in the tropicals and whatnot. They know, they know what I'm doing, right? So I don't know if they felt bad asking or, you know, embarrassed or whatever, but about nine months ago, I was talking to the neighbor. It's a husband and a wife. I was talking to the wife and, you know, I told her, uh, hey, you know, you're, you're, this is what's wrong with your tree. You know, uh, if you need any help, I'll, I'll give you a hand. I have no problem. I'm not going to charge you anything. Nothing like that. We're neighbors. You know, that's what neighbors do. So I went over there and I fertilized it. I told her, you know, what the problem is, why it's not growing, why it looks like crap. And, you know, she understood. And, you know, time went on. So this was uh, probably f late summer, early fall of 2022. It's uh, July 2023 right now. So it was like about nine months ago, right? And uh, now I'm maybe almost a year. So I fertilized it. She watered it. She kept up on the watering and it looked great for probably three, four weeks. And then it stalled out and then it slowly declined. And then it was going into winter. So, uh, you know, it was off and on in the winter. Spring comes, early, early spring comes. I fertilized it again. She just picks up on the watering and it's, it looks good. Same routine. Looks good for a couple of weeks and slowly declines again. So I did it a, about a month ago again. And, uh, even though it wasn't getting watered right, she was giving it a little bit more. I think she might have slowed down a little bit. Um, it lost all its leaves and, you know, got really hot as hell, lost all its leaves. And uh, I think the fertilizer did actually help it stay a little healthier. Um, the fertilizer that I put on it is fertilizer that I make. It's a water soluble. I use regular Stay Green or miracle grow um, water soluble fertilizer and to it i add water soluble potash i add water, water soluble manganese water soluble um, magnesium and then i also use water soluble chelated iron that is made for hydroponics and it's actually bioavailable to the plant up to 11 on the ph scale which is super high and when i mix this stuff up i mix it by weight it's all exact i do it uh, for certain reasons. And that's what I use uh, to spot treat most of my plants. And once I do that, it pretty much takes care of all the nutrient deficiencies um, and the plant springs back to life. And, you know, usually at that point, um, you know, it's mulched and all ready to go. So I was telling back to my neighbor's tree, I was telling them, you know, what they need to do with the watering and this and that. And, uh, a couple days ago, my neighbor, I'm pulling out of the driveway, my neighbor comes running over and he says, hey, I'm going to be trimming the uh, the neighbor's ficus tree because it's hanging over my driveway and I'm worried about it falling on our brand new trucks. All right. He goes, uh, would you want that? I said, oh, hell yeah. And uh, I said, I got a better idea. You know, I'm running through the chipper shredder and uh, can bolt your tree. What do you think? He goes, yeah, I'd like to do that. So... I sold them on that. I'm like, yes, good, you know, because I'm tired of looking at this this poor tree, you know. Not that I think it's an eyesore. I feel bad for the tree, you know, and I feel bad for them. They paid a lot of money for this thing, you know. They want it to look good. And it's, like I said, it's it's grown uh, maybe a foot, foot and a half, two feet since I planted I don't have any pictures from five years ago of it, but it hasn't grown much, you know. And uh, anyway, so today's Sunday, yesterday. He gets out there, he trims the tree, he's got a little chainsaw on a pole, he's got a regular chainsaw and some, some big uh, branch cutters, he trims it all up to manageable pieces, gets rid of the big chunks, and I start running it through my chipper shredder, right? Get about 10-15 minutes into it, chipper shredder bites the dust, starts smoking, burnt windings, you get smell electrical fire. <sighs> so anyway, it's kind of mad hot it was uh yesterday and today around uh 115 plus no shade uh humidity in the morning was probably about 35 percent towards about five o'clock it dropped down to about 15 so pretty nasty out there guys 
So I go out and I go to Harbor Freight because they're the only ones that have them in stock. I buy a $140 Chinese junk chipper shredder. Gets the job done. Start shredding some more. Three o'clock roll or 2.30 rolls around. Got to take my daughter to the Kung Fu class. Don't get home until like 6.30, almost 7 o'clock. Can't film, can't finish shredding it. So go out this morning, shred the rest. And as you can see here in the B-roll, you know, I didn't do it before and after picture of the pile, but it was a gigantic pile of branches and it's now condensed down to this little pile that you see. And you can see it's, it's nice, fluffy, uh, arborist type wood chips, you know. So my neighbor Brandon, he comes over and, you know, gets a uh, steel rake and he starts raking back the rocks around this Hong Kong orchid. And I explained to him, you know, how the root system works and everything. And he says, man, that really makes sense. How come they never told me this when I bought the tree? You know, because they don't care, right? They're, they just want your money. So here's a little FYI, guys. And a lot of people don't know this. I'm sure you heard the term drip line. All right. So drip line, when you hear that, that has nothing to do with drip irrigation. All right. That has nothing to do with some imaginary thing. It's when it rains the water, when it hits the leaves, it runs off and it runs to the outside and it drips off the edge of the canopy, all right? That's your drip line, where the water runs off the leaves when it rains and drips on the ground. That's usually right around the outside of the canopy of the tree, okay? So I explained to him, you know, we need to water up to the drip line. Beyond would be better, but he's got very expensive crushed rock in his front yard, and I'm sure he doesn't want to remove all the rock or make this huge ring of mulch okay he just wants to do up to the drip line which i'm fine with six seven feet great so he rakes all the rocks back all right and like i said i fertilized this about a month ago so it does not need fertilizer because we haven't had any rain in months and months and months and the way they're watering they're watering close to the trunk which is a big no-no guys water where the roots are out around the drip line not at the base of the trunk and so anyway, the, that fertilizer is still sitting on top of that soil or, or mixed in on the, the top layer. So what we did, after we moved the rock, all right, we put composted cow poop in there, all right? El Toro brand, or Garden Time El Toro composted cow poop, which is cow poop mixed with wood chips, composted, and who knows, whatever crap they put in there, all right? We did about four bags of that, all right? And... His drip line is about six to seven feet. I didn't measure exactly, just eyeballing. Six to seven feet in diameter, all right? That's where the canopy, the edge of the canopy is, for the most part. So we filled that up, probably about uh, two to three inches thick, okay? And on top of that, we put some soil sulfur, okay? So our soil here, naturally in this neighborhood, is... Uh, between 8 and 8.5 on the pH scale. So we need to get the pH down because it is a tropical. So we're, we're aiming for a Hong Kong orchid anywhere from 6 to 6.5 on the pH scale. 7 is okay, but 6.5 and to 6 is going to do a lot better for the tree. When the pH is lower like that, especially for tropicals, it makes the nutrients more available to the plant. If they're above 7, a lot of times a tropical plant cannot absorb those nutrients out of the soil okay the ph locks it out so your plant struggles and what a lot of people do they start noticing nitrogen phosphorus potassium whatever the deficiency may be and they add more fertilizer thinking the plant's not getting enough it's not getting enough when you do that now you're basically salting the ground so now you're creating a very saline soil all right tropicals do not like salty soil what happens with that is Instead of the moisture going into the tree, the moisture is drawn into the soil because the soil is more salty, all right? Water always travels to a more saline area. So if you have a lower saline soil, the tree is a little more saline, it could suck that up, okay? So put, the, put some soil sulfur down. That is going to get converted eventually, probably in a couple of months, by bacteria in the soil into sulfuric acid that's going to percolate down into the soil and acidify it and hopefully lower the soil. It's probably gonna take about two years, okay? So we're gonna do the application now, we're gonna do another application probably in the fall, another one in the spring and another one next fall. 
and that should be sufficient enough to bring the pH down in that area. And with the composted cow poop we put down and then what we put down on top of it, it's going to totally feed the plant. So the next step was we put down these wood chips from this ficus tree, okay? All around the drip line, we put it about probably 10 inches thick, all right? Pretty thick. That's on top of that composted cow poop layer. Now, he's going to go out and he's going to get a border, okay? Um, probably going to do uh, angled bricks. They're kind of gray, concrete probably. I think they're five or six inches tall and pretty decent. So you can make a nice little circle out of them. And we're probably going to do two to three high. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the crushed rocks out of our wood chips. And it's going to keep our wood chips from going out into the crushed rock. Okay. Now, arborist wood chips, they have leaves in them. They have bark. They got branches. So they're all different kinds of colors. They're not... I like them personally, but most people want something that's all uniform and matching. So on top of those wood chips, he's going to put another type of wood chip just to dress it up. So either cypress mulch or cedar chips or some sort of dyed pine or whatever. Um, just on top of that, probably another three inches. Okay. Now on top of that, since he's going to top dress it with another thing of wood chips, I put um, not a lot, but a little bit of Osmocote fertilizer, right? It's a slow release fertilizer, complete for, well, almost complete. I think it's got, uh, 11 nutrients in it as opposed to the full, I think it's 17 more than enough. Okay. So I put that there. That should get him and her, the neighbors <laughs> through the winter with fertilizing. They shouldn't have to worry about fertilizing between the cow poop, compost cow poop, the, uh, arborist wood chips and the Osmocote, they should be fine with fertilizer for the next six to nine months, no problem. All right, so he hasn't gotten the blocks yet. They got to go out and get those. Um, this is what their old borders look like. He told me these stupid things were 25 bucks a piece. He's got two of them, and you can see, I mean, they, they didn't go out far enough, all right? So like I said, when he was watering or she was watering, they were watering basically the trunk of the tree, you know, right next to the trunk as opposed to out in the drip line. So... I explained to him how the root systems work with the feeder roots um, and how they travel through the surface. And that's where you get your water and nutrient uptake. Okay. And then I explained to him that the deeper roots are there to anchor the tree. They are not there to feed the tree. All right. Totally gets that. Totally understands it. Totally cool with it. Totally scratching his head. Why Moon Valley never told him this. Um, so after we did all that, he went out there with a hose end sprayer and put it on the shower setting and watered it in for about a half an hour all over, saturated the whole area. And I told him, you know, in the summer here, um, if you're doing that, you're probably going to have to do it for about 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, I said I'd help him set up uh, micro sprayers and he said, oh, he's like, I don't want to get too technical. I don't really have the time. So he's going to go out and he's going to buy a little metal sprinkler. All right. And that little metal sprinkler is just going to, you know, put out like a little shower, like a little spray. And he's going to run that probably about 10 to 15 minutes a day, every single day. Cause we're trying to keep that top foot to foot and a half, maybe two feet of soil moist for the summer. Okay. When the weather cools off, cut down during the winter, very little, especially if we get rain and it sounds like a lot of water. 10, 15 minutes a day coming out of that thing, but it's really not that much, right, guys? No drip. Drip, wasting water. All right, get rid of your drip. So we got done with it today. I had a little bit of uh, the mulch that I made, running it through the uh, the ficus tree trimmings through my chipper shredder and uh, spread it on some of my trees and spots. I'm going to do another chip drop uh, in the fall because I haven't done one in about a year now, and, and my wood chips are starting to cook down. In some spots, they're almost completely gone. Um, so when I get my chip drop, his wood chips that are 10 inches thick, um, not the top layer that he's going to dress up, but the, the arborist wood chips, uh, those are probably going to cook down to about an inch or so by the time I get my chip drop. So what we're going to do is when, when I get mine, we're going to rake his fancy chips back and we're going to put more wood chips and then rake his fancy chips back over so it looks all nice. And uh, in the meantime, too, I told him, you know, you can compost in place. I tell everyone this, compost in place. Wood chips are only going to supply so much. 
arborist wood chips are better than bagged wood chips because they got leaves and all sorts of goodies in them. Uh, bagged wood chips are mainly there to supply carbon to the ground uh, as they decompose and keep it moist, lock, you know, lock in the moisture and all that, keep it cool. Um, the arborist wood chips are a lot better, um, but they are not going to supply everything your plant needs. You are going to have to compost in place or you're going to have to use leaf litter. Um, wood chips are good. Arborist wood chips are great, but they're still not good enough. So compost in place, guys. If you're not composting in place, you are going to have to use some sort of fertilizer, whether it's organic or chemical. Uh, I don't use organic fertilizer. I think it's a waste of money because it's breaking down into chemical fertilizer anyway. Um, you know, you can buy chemical fertilizer and you could apply it at a lower rate and you're going to get the same exact effect as if you used organic fertilizer. All right. Um, and it's going to be instantaneous too. So if you got a nutrient deficiency and you water it with, uh, let's say quarter strength miracle grow, uh, liquid water soluble Mir miracle grow, uh, versus like, let's say, uh, bone meal or fish emulsion or, or any of those things, it's going to be instantaneous as opposed to having to wait a couple of days for this stuff to start break down and, and feed the plant. So, on this tree guys uh kind of rushed for time here but i am gonna do some updates probably in a week or two weeks when he gets the border around the bottom top dresses it with his uh mulch of choice to beautify it and once the tree starts picking up i'm gonna do a video and i'm gonna show you guys how it works so or how it works out so guys, if you have a tree, you just bought a house or you planted a tree wrong or whatever, don't worry about it. If you didn't prepare the hole and you planted the tree, it's not that big of a deal. The reason I prepare holes the way I do with mixing 50-50 um, native soil with like compost and cow poop or compost or garden soil, whatever you want to use, is tropicals that we're growing, the tropicals we're growing. Um, mainly they grow in, when they start out life, they grow in the topsoil and mulch, right? Forest litter, whatever you want to call it. Usually in the tropics, that's a, a pretty thick layer. So, you know, we want to kind of mimic that as the plant's getting started. Once it gets into the clay soil and it's established, we don't care anymore. All we want is the mulch on top for the feeder roots to dig through and we want to keep it moist, All right, guys? So. If you have a tree like this that's planted in the middle of a front yard surrounded by crushed rocks and it's a highly tropical tree and it's doing really bad looking like crap this is what you can do you don't have to worry about scraping soil you don't have to worry about digging make your border put your sulfur down put your topsoil down put your wood chips down and you're good to go guys that's all you have to do you don't have to worry about anything else i am going to be doing a video guys on testing Soil pH, N, P, K, and I'm also going to be doing, uh, in that video, I'm also going to be including uh, how to test your, your water and your, your city water that you're watering your plants with, or well water, or however you're getting it from a truck, I don't know. Um, but just so you guys know, uh, it's kind of hard to find, so I did my own testing, and in my area of Mesa, ow, we get the by ants. Uh, in my area of Mesa, the water on the pH scale is 8.3 to 8.4 coming out of the garden hose or the kitchen sink. Don't matter. It's all the same. Uh, so pH wise, 8.3, 8.4 pH. Got it? Perfect. Okay. So uh, like I was saying, if you guys bought a house or know someone or whatever they have this problem you have a problem you don't have to go crazy digging holes or anything just do what i did with their plant and i'm going to show you the results so you guys are going to see the difference between growing a plant in our native soil with no mulch crushed rock out in the middle of hot hot arizona weather and watering incorrectly versus how quick the plant is going to recover or tree i should say uh, when you change the ground covering and water correctly and correct for the soil nutrients. And another thing, guys, if you're thinking you got a nutrient deficiency, don't trust what you see online with pictures, okay? Uh, don't trust what other people say. Go out and get yourself a soil test kit. 
That's for N, P, and K, and pH. All right. Tropicals, anywhere, anywhere from six to seven on the pH scale is going to be okay. All right. N, P, and K, if one's low, one's high, whatever, you need to figure out how to fix that. If things are high, usually a little bit of gypsum and you can flush the nutrients out if there's too much. If there's too little, I would try adding just that particular nutrient to bring it back up. All right, guys. So don't go crazy adding fertilizer. Test your soil. Trust me, it'll pay off in the end. If it's a minor nutrient problem, get your NPK and your pH and your watering and your top dressing of your soil right. And then if you want to go crazy, you can get a lab analysis. But if you do those things first, your minor nutrient deficiencies will probably go. So I hope you liked that video, guys. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. Your questions make my day, all right? Criticism, whatever, I don't care. I love it all, all right? Um, so please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell so you get updates on this video and any of my future videos. And until the next video, guys, keep growing.